Hey y'all, it's Heel Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. My name is George Coles and this is our TNA show for the week. Let's jump right into it with the so-so portions of the show. Basically the portions that are not good, not bad, they're just there. Uh, first was James Storm versus Gunner, which ended in a double count out. I know why they did it. They're going to build to a bigger match and build the personal nature of this match more so that's why it doesn't fall into the bad category for me it falls into the so-so if they would have just ended it on a double count out and it was a nothing throwaway match I'd be upset with it building their feud it makes sense in that however I still have the the feeling of being dissatisfied with the ending but I understand what they're doing with it going forward also on the so-so list the Monsters Ball match, Bad Influence versus, jo versus Joseph Park. Again, I think they've run too far with this Joseph Park is Abyss thing. It wasn't really a good match either. Um, the, the hardcore was bad. The setups were bad. It took him a long time to get to certain spots. He eventually goes full Abyss at the end. I mean... I, I, I just, I think they could have done it better. I think his character deserves better than that, Abyss, with as much as it's meant to the company. As well as Bad Influence, Kazarian and Daniels. They've meant so much to TNA that they deserve a little bit better than this go-nowhere feud, basically. And last but not least on our list of the so-so items, Lady Tapa versus ODB. This had the potential to be a great heavy hitting women's division match um, a la when ODB used to fight, fight Kong it just didn't get off the ground for whatever reason I don't know if these ladies just don't have good chemistry um, same thing happened in the tag match I think it was last week or the week before with uh, Tapa and Kim versus ODB and Madison Rain. I don't know if the chemistry is just a bit off or what the situation is. For some reason, when they put them together, what should be like a Godzilla vs. King Kong ends up being two clunky robots fighting each other. I don't know. That was a horrible analogy. But you get what I'm saying. It was clunky and it didn't seem to work well. Where I think it should have been more of a just a bash. These two should have had a great match with each other. They match up well size-wise, talent-wise, skill-wise. Sometimes people just don't click in the ring. And this was one of those instances where I think that happened. Now off of that, and on to the bad segment of the show. The stuff that we just didn't like whatsoever. Only one thing I didn't really like about the show, and that was the long convoluted opener. We had Rockstar Spud come out with Dixie Carter, and they were... They were saying they were going to have an announcement, which brought out Jeff Hardy to cut him off, which brought out Ethan Carter the third, which brought out Sting, which brought out Gunner and Storm. The whole thing took up about 20 minutes of the show. On a show that's only two hours long, wasting 20 minutes with really go-nowhere in-ring promos kind of kills the mood for me. So basically we have... One-sixth of the show took up two segments, by the way. Um, it did lead to the Gunner and Storm match was made off of this, but it, and it, they made the main event and all that stuff. However, it just took up too much time on the show. If you're going to have your opening segment be in a talk segment, which I think they should do away with, um, it's just... Don't... Don't waste so much of our time before you get into matches. I mean, we had four actual wrestling matches in a two-hour show. And none of them was an extremely long match. It was just... They wasted so much time on this segment, I think, that it hampered 
the rest of the show and what they could do creatively. But really, my only that's my only real qualm with the show. Now coming off of that, we're going to go into our question of the week. Last week the question was, what is your New Year's resolution for TNA? We'll get an answer from one of our friends before we go into ours. Uh, it's from our friend Lord Bogglesworth. I think TNA's New Year's resolution should be differentiate themselves from WWE. Doing so by focusing more on matches as opposed to segments. Fitting how that fit in right there with what I was just speaking of. There we have another opinion from somebody else that just agrees basically with what I was talking about with the long opening segment. My resolution, and that, that's a great resolution by the way, I, it, it's exactly straight on with some of the things that I think are wrong with TNA and the wrestling business in general. I'm tired of the format. I'm tired of the, we start talking, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm tired of that. Give me something fresh and new. I agree with him. It's, show us that you're different than what's being put on on Monday Night Raw. My resolution would be to rebuild, to build up some of the in-house homegrown talent to make basically almost the same thing he's saying, to make TNA, product, the product of TNA, different and maybe in some cases better than WWE. Build up your guys like Storm, like Gunner, like Bad Influence, like Ethan Carter III, which I know he's a... WWE reject, but he never really made it onto the show. Um, start marginalizing guys like, and I hate to say it because I'm fans of a lot of them, start marginalizing guys like Bully Ray Sting, you know, guys that are tied to a bygone era. Basically, Sting's era ended 15 years ago with, T with a WCW, and I know the timing's off a bit. Um, Bully Ray, we think of the Attitude Era. Sting, we think of WCW. Kurt Angle, we think of the Attitude Era. Not that these guys aren't good and they don't serve a purpose. Let's get them away from the main events. Let's get some homegrown TNA talent or talent that's cut their teeth and really has made an impact in TNA. Let's move them up the card. That's my resolution. Uh, build around some of the talent that they have. They got some of the best talent in the wrestling world on their roster. Let's start using it in a way that makes sense. Um, if AJ Styles is not coming back and the rumors are all over the board with that, they really don't have many homegrown stars that identify with TNA. So this is the year they need to start building them for the next decade. Now coming off of that, our question of the week for next week is we seen the breakup of Gunner and Storm. Who do you think is going to get a world championship out of the two first? Now, I know Storm's already a former champion, but discounting that going forward, I, I see a lot of potential in both guys. I think James Storm, it's criminally insane how, how much they devalue this guy. He should be one of the top three, four guys in the company. The guy has everything you would want, much like James Storm, his former partner. He is an absolutely spot-on babyface that everybody can get behind. He's great in the ring. He's a great talker. Uh, when it comes to blood feuds in TNA, no one's been better than James Storm. I have no clue why he isn't the upper echelon of TNA talent, but for some reason, he's not breaking that glass ceiling, but he should be. And Gunner, look, I don't have to like somebody to say that they're good, and Gunner is getting better and better every time he steps into the ring. My personal opinion, I didn't like what he said about $5 wrestling earlier in the year. I thought... I felt like he was a little bit of an asshole about it. Aside from that, the guy is improving leaps and bounds with his look, with his charisma. He, he looks like a serious threat, and he acts and carries himself like that as such with the intensity. I hate to use this comparison because of where everybody goes with it, 
but I haven't seen this kind of intensity come out of a wrestler since Samoa Joe when he was unstoppable, or since Chris Benoit at the height of his popularity when he was the rabid Wolverine. And this is exactly what Gunner's starting to remind me of, and major props to the kid. Hopefully he can make it up to the top as well. Like I said earlier, these are two guys you could build your company around. And I like where both of their careers, I like the trajectory their careers should be going on. The question of the week, to get back to that, I went off a little bit on a tangent, is who do you see getting to the world, getting a world championship run first, Gunner or Storm? Let us know who you th what you think. Hit us up on Twitter, hit us up on Facebook, put it down where? Down there in the comments. And now to the good portion of the show. This is stuff I actually really like. I really enjoyed, and I know I'm going to sound a little bit hypocritical because I just bashed the talk segment, the Brooke Tessmacher, Bully Ray in rig segment where Bully Ray came out, looked like a depressed teenager while Brooke was running him down for, he was, she was only using him, blah, 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 blah. Way to hurt for her to stop talking, and this is what I really liked. The background music that they kicked in behind Bully Ray and the overall tone of what Bully Ray was saying, along with the, the promo a few weeks ago, which was the Motley Crue lyrics, um, the darkness that they're bringing out of the Bully Ray character, taking him to a really dark place. I really want to see where they're going to go with that. The guy is one of the greatest talkers of the last 20 years in professional wrestling. And he's... They're giving him a new direction to go, and it's it's coming off really evil and sinister, harkening back to the days of Kevin Sullivan, almost like what WWE is doing with Bray Wyatt, but a different, I think it's a different avenue than that. I think this is more so a guy that's unraveling mentally, and you're seeing the real evil come out of Bully Ray. And I, I really enjoy what they're doing with and I think that going forward this is going to be one of the things that really makes TNA an exciting show to watch and I know I sound like a kind of a hypocrite just five not even five minutes ago I'm bashing the fact that they have too much talk time but this is the kind of segment you use you use a segment like this to progress a character or a storyline the opening segment didn't really progress anything but the fact that this Dixie Carter's on TV. Last but not least, my favorite portion of the show, Jeff Hardy and Sting versus EC3, Rockstar Spud, and the Bromance. They didn't tell us the Bromance were going to be in it until the very end of the show, which I thought was a nice little addition, nice little add to the match, made it a little bit more unfair the of course the numbers end up winning the show I thought it was a solid match I thought Hardy and Sting worked really well with the four younger talents this is why you would I would use Hardy and Sting going forward help them to build up guys like Rockstar Spud like Ethan Carter the third like the bro mans like the several other you know a Gunner versus Sting would be a great feud I think, personally. The intensity of Gunner matching the intensity of Sting could be something really exciting to work with. I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was a, as good as a handicap match as you're going to see. Um, the ending when Jeff Hardy said he's going to take, he's leaving TNA, that he's done. Rumors are out there because it's only because they're going to England and he can't leave the country, obviously. That could be it, but it also builds to when they come back, Hardy could come back to save somebody. So I like what they did with this. Everything that about that main event was so well put together to move storylines forward. You move the, the fact that EC3 is basically the chosen future of the company. And I, I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed that main event a lot more than I thought I was going to going into it. Let's get right down into this. Now, if you've seen our show in the past, you know we have a 1 to 5 scale for the ratings. We rated it. A 1 is the worst, 5 is the best. 
One's a Jesse Goddard, two's a Garrett Bishop, three's a James Storm, four's a Christopher Daniels, five's a Bobby Roode. I'm going to give this show a three, a James Storm. There was a lot of the show, not much bad on the show, a lot of the so-so portion of the show, and it kind of, it's kind of where it leveled out as, that the bad leveled out with the good and left all the so-so stuff right there. Um, were there some good segments? Obviously, you seen there were two that I really enjoyed. There was one that was really terrible with the opening segment, in my opinion. And there were some that could have been better, but just weren't. So basically, overall, give it a three at James Storm. And that's all I really have to say about that. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heal Heat.